Thursday, March the 3rd, and it's good to be with you this morning. I hope and trust you had a good night's sleep, a good night's rest. I certainly did, and a great night's rest, as a matter of fact, and I woke up this morning feeling good, and uh, boy, maybe the reason I was feeling so good this morning was because of our corporate worship and prayer last night. It was, man, we met with the Lord last night. It was a good time of worship and prayer. And uh, man, it was just great to come together with the body and to pray. Um, I shared with the group last night that corporate prayer has become my favorite service of, of the month. Um, it's, it's um, boy, it's just something to, to, to be a part of and experience. And so I encourage you to, uh, to make a commitment plans to be a part of our corporate prayers on the first Wednesday night of every month and uh, if you were there last night and you can attest to that give me a heart or a thumbs up emoji this morning uh, just to bear witness to what I said that it was a good time of prayer last night. We want to pray for Linda Williams. She had her hip replacement yesterday and let's continue to pray for her. Uh, she's uh, recovering from that especially the help that she needs with Johnny uh, so let's be praying for them. And also, let's remember to pray for Ken Moss. Uh, Joan had posted a report yesterday on him. And so let's pray for Ken and for Joan as well. And um, let's uh, remember to lift up the Petrescos as uh, Leah and the kids are uh, just in a time of mourning and um, grieving the loss of Constantine. And But we know and trust that the Holy Spirit will meet them and we'll be with them. Pray for Miss Vicki. She's traveling down today to be with her mom and celebrate her 85th birthday. So let's pray for safe travel for Vicki and other things. But this morning, we're going to be closing out the Gospel of John and chapter 21. And man, there's some just some incredible stuff there at that in that last chapter. And in one sense, I'm sad that we're closing out the Gospel of John, but I'm very excited about beginning to look at uh, Jesus from the writer the perspective of, of the author of the book of Hebrews and we're going to see how much he is better and greater than all that had been revealed to Israel in their previous history and so um, and I encourage you to invite people to be a part of that also uh, just a little house cleaning here uh, we have now taken our audio of our daily devotions and they'll be uploaded every day on Spotify as well as a podcast and other avenues. So if you're driving or commuting and you can't watch, you can catch it on that or you can catch it later. So he leadeth me, oh blessed thought, oh words with heavenly comfort. Whatever I do, wherever I be, still tis God's. Some's buried as flowers bloom by water still, or troubled sea still tis his hand that he did need. He needed me, he needed me. I
second thoughts when you sang that third verse. I did. Uh, let me read the words to you again. Lord, I would clasp thy hand in mine, nor ever murmur, nor repine. Content whatever lot I see, since tis thy hand that leadeth me. Um, we all murmur and complain sometimes, don't we? Um, but it's that growing to learn to be content and seeing God as a sovereign God in our life. And the songwriter here says that he, he doesn't murmur nor complain. And I haven't arrived at that place yet, but I'm learning to know and trust the sovereignty of God. How many of you would say the same thing? We're coming to this close of chapter 21 in the Gospel of John. There's one event that, that has just always been very special to me. And actually, we're going to pick up in verse 15 as Jesus is having uh, his discourse with Peter. Uh, I, I find it interesting that when Jesus first met Peter, fishing was involved. And now here, at the last where Jesus would see Peter, fishing is involved again. And uh, Peter and the other disciples had gone back to fishing after Jesus had, had, a, had been raised from the dead and had, ascended to the, had not yet ascended to the Father. Uh, kind of maybe dismayed, confused, not sure. And they went back to the only thing that they knew to do, and that was to go go fishing. But Jesus had something in mind for them, and he's about to convey that to Peter. We recall and know that Peter on that last night, uh, had before Jesus was crucified, had fulfilled what Jesus had prophesied in his life, and that would be that before the rooster crowed three times, uh, Peter would have denied Jesus and Peter, before that, was, was ready to take on the whole uh, temple guard in order to defend Jesus and uh, cut off the guy's ear. And um, Peter rashly proclaimed he had followed Jesus to his death. And Jesus said, hey, listen, Peter, don't be so confident in yourself. I'm telling you, before the rooster crows, you'll have denied me three times. And in fact, Peter did that. And that the third time when he denied him, he heard the rooster crow. So here Peter is after, um, after Jesus' death and burial and resurrection, probably feeling some sense of defeat, uh, maybe realizing that he had failed Jesus in the most critical hour of denying him. But what I love about the story here is, is God's grace and God's mercy in restoring Peter. And the application, I think, for you and I is that no matter, um, no matter how we might uh, disappoint the Lord, if I can use that phrase, or disappoint ourselves. and uh, No matter what it is that we might do, God is always willing to restore us back into fellowship with Him. That God is not going to hold anything against us as we've trusted Christ. And it's the blood of Christ that has cleansed us from all sin. It's the blood of Christ that uh, that enables us to have access to the throne of God. And His graces and His mercies are always here. I'm so glad that that we have a God who is a loving God, and while He cannot tolerate sin, uh, He has made a provision in a way through that that we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus when we accepted Him, and His blood makes us righteous. But in that fellowship with God, where we might break that because of our intentional actions, just as Peter did here. God is always willing. God is always, always, always extending grace to us. I always like to say, you know, Peter had good intentions, but he still denied Jesus. And and oftentimes we can have good intentions and yet fail in our good intentions. And so in all of that, we always have to come back to recognize that our feet are clay. We may fail God. Others may fail God. They may fail us. 
But we take this example of God's grace as he extends it to Peter, and we apply it in our own personal fellowship and relationship with the Lord. And we can also apply that with others in their life. Let's not be quick to judge others lest we too fall in the same way. So here we have this recorded, verse 15. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Pointing to the other disciples that were there. And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, Then feed my lambs. Verse 16, He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Then feed my lambs, or feed my sheep, tend my sheep. And he said, verse 17, to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved, or he was hurt, because Jesus had asked him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him again, then feed my sheep. Now, there's a lot that's been made of this, this uh, particular instance with, with Peter. But I think the main thing we need to learn from this is what we've already spoken of, is that, is that Jesus is always willing to restore us back into fellowship. He asked him three times, and I think there's a parallel here between Peter denying Jesus three times and three times he asked Peter. There's also an interchange in the word love that, that Jesus uses here, and I think there's something to it, but I, I don't know that it's everything to it. Twice, the first two times, he asked, he asked Peter, Peter, do you agape me? Do you love me unconditionally? Do you love me more than, more than everything? And Peter responds to him, and Jesus says, then tend my sheep. And the second time he says, uh, excuse me, to tend my lambs. The second time he says, then feed my sheep. And then the third time, he, he uses that word for love in the Greek, phileo. Do you, do you have an affectionate love for me? And, and I'm not sure the significance of that, but I think there probably is. Um, but just not quite sure. It's not clear what that significance might be. Uh, but then the third time, he says, then feed my sheep. And so I, I, I think there was a repetitive question to Peter. Peter, do you love me? And three times Jesus tells Peter what his calling is going to be. His calling is going to be to tend to the lambs and to feed his sheep, uh, those who would be the body of Christ. And he's driving that home to Peter. Peter, if you love me, then you'll be obedient to what I'm commanding you to do here. Uh, Jesus had said, if we love him, then we'll obey his command. And so he's just drilling it home. And then verse 18, there's a, there's a real significant point here because Jesus begins to prophesy and predict the way that Peter is going to die. He says in verse 18, truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. Now here, Jesus is beginning to show Peter how he is indeed going to die. You remember the instance when he denied Jesus? Uh, just before that, he was willing to go to the death uh, to follow Christ, and then he disowned him. And I think there's a restating of, of that three times that he denied Peter when Jesus asked him, Do you love me? And then he tells him, reiterates the fact that, Peter, you are going to die a martyr because of me. You are going to die because of your obedience to me. And this is the fashion that he's telling Peter that he's going to die. Now, the scriptures don't record Peter's death, but early historians, there's, there's tremendous support that all early church historians agreed that Peter, in fact, was martyred. He was killed. He was persecuted under the persecution of Nero in somewhere in or around the year 64 A.D., and we don't know specifically, there's not a lot of historical evidence, but tradition says that, that Peter, in fact, was martyred and he was also crucified. But at the request of Peter, he was crucified upside down rather than upright up because he did not feel as though he was worthy enough to be crucified the way that Christ was. And so uh, Jesus was, was emphasizing to Peter, Peter, there's going to be a cost to you following me because he tells him after this, follow me. And 
the the truth is for any one of us who desires to desires and decides to be a follower of Christ, there is going to be a cost to following Christ. There are a number of just regular costs in our life, oftentimes, to, to following Christ. But when we think of this idea of discipleship, of following Christ, Scripture is very clear, Jesus is very clear, that if we're to follow him, we have to deny ourselves, take up our cross daily, and follow him. There is a cost to following Jesus. And I would say to anyone who professes to be a follower of Christ, that if there's not a cost involved, then you're really not a follower of Christ. Because this world and the system of the world is going a completely different direction. Our flesh wants to go in a completely different direction. But when we follow Christ, there's always going to be a cost. It may not be to the degree that Peter had to pay the price uh, by having his life taken in persecution by Nero, but it may be a cost where family rejects us. It may be a cost where our friends reject us. It may be a cost even within the body of Christ that, that if we follow Jesus, other believers are going to reject us. Because there's something very obvious about following Jesus. It, it's, it's in a sense upside down in comparison to the ways of the world. But he calls us to follow him. The closing verses of this, this chapter, uh, Peter, in response to what Jesus had told him the way that he was going to die, he turned and he pointed to John, uh, who is the author of this gospel, and says, what about him? Is he going to remain or is he going to die as well? And, and Jesus tells Peter, listen, it's none of your business whether, whether he's going to live or die, but that's my business. And the point there, I think, is, is that we each, while we are all a part of the body of Christ, that we each have our own cross, we each have our own path in following Jesus. And the question is, am I going to be concerned about what's happening to the crowd? Or am I going to be concerned about my walk and my following after Christ? I want to encourage you uh, that yes, there are going to be costs of following Jesus. But I can't think of anything sweeter than to be in fellowship with him and following after him. Well, I pray the Lord blesses you today. He keeps you. Keep these things in mind that there is a cost to following Jesus. There's a price to that. Keep in mind also that no matter how we might fail along the way, Jesus is always standing there with open arms to restore us, to receive us back to fellowship with him. I pray the Lord blesses you today, that he keeps you Pray and ask God to give you an opportunity today to sow a seed of the gospel in somebody's life or we recognize that a seed has been sown there, that God would give us the wisdom to know how to cultivate that seed. And God, by his grace, if he would allow us to see somebody be saved today, that would just make our day. So as you go, wherever you go, as you go, go and make disciples. Be a disciple of Jesus. Well, I pray that uh, I'll have the opportunity to see you this weekend and in our service at 10, 10 a.m. I pray the Lord would bless you again and keep you. Have a great day.